Thank you for joining us today. Thank you for joining us at our first of a series of webinars that will take place every Wednesday at 3 p.m. So before we begin, I just have a quick housekeeping announcement. Today, our speakers will be taking questions. So if you do have any questions for them, you can submit it via the Q&A button at the bottom of the screen. With that, I shall now hand over to our first speaker, Ms. Pang Ziyun from Neurowiser. Ziyun, over to you, please. Let me just share my screen. Good afternoon, everyone. My name is Ziyun. I'm from a company called Neurowiser. And I'm here today to tell you about digital brain function screen. We are in a very unique space um, and our company was founded by neuroscientists to address the problem of brain health. We were founded originally by the two gentlemen on the, white, on the right, Dr. Brem Pillay and Nav Veitch. They are both neuroscientists and I'm Ziyun uh, right here on the left. I was, I'm also co-founder and CEO of the company. My background was in uh, Philips and population health. And I also sat on the World Economic Forum uh, Global uh, Council on Longevity. The problem that we're trying to tackle is early brain decline. Many of you may know someone who has dementia or Alzheimer's and who has suffered from stroke. All these diseases start from early brain decline. And this problem of early brain decline is actually more common than we think. It could be as many as one in 10 at the age of 30, rising to almost two in five by the age of 60. Early brain decline, if we don't deal with it, it leads to dementia. And as I said, many of us know somebody who lives with dementia. It leads to mental health problems and it leads to stroke. These are actually serious problems. Here in Asia, we know that there is soon going to be a coming dementia epidemic. Already there are. It was, it was, uh, already we know that by 2050, there will be 66 million people in Asia with dementia. Mental health is currently already the second biggest issue in, in Asia. And stroke, stroke is the second largest cause of death globally. And today, many people live with the aftermath of stroke. This problem of brain disease and brain decline is going to be more serious post-COVID. We know that people who have had COVID have had structural changes to the brain. We don't do anything about it. In about 10 years time, there's gonna be a tsunami of dementia, with L of Alzheimer's, of the mental health problems and of stroke. Okay. So what can we do about it? As with many diseases, preventive care is the best because if we detect early brain decline early, it is possible to roll it back or slow it down. Whereas if we wait for it to become dementia, mental health problems or stroke, there's very little that we can do about it. But today, there are very few tools out there that enable us to detect early brain decline. And this is what NeuroWiser set out to do. We are providing one neuroscience platform that can do everything from screening, diagnosing, uh, monitoring, and eventually to be able to prevent brain and mental health conditions. Let me go into detail with you about this solution that we're offering today. This is the digital brain function screen. What is it? It is an online tool that takes about 15 minutes to do. It is a series of 10 neuroscience puzzles that's administered online. People are given a link, they log in, they do the 15 minute test, and at the end of it, their physician can get a report like the one that you see on the screen. This report will give them an overall brain score and also break down into attention, immediate memory, working memory, and brain executive function. Okay. This report serves uh, as a discussion tool between the medical professional and the patient. It makes previously expensive brain health tests much more affordable and much more accessible because it's now nothing more than an online link. This is able to lead to early cognitive decline that, as I said earlier, can be reversed. This is a medical grade tool. We are FDA cleared. We're registered in Singapore. We're already TGA cleared. We hope to be, uh, we aim to be registered in many more Asian countries in the next two months. This is the, after the assessment, the patient gets a report such like the, the one you see on the left. And as I said earlier, page, patients are scored on their overall performance, working memory, memory, attention, and executive function. We also provide lifestyle recommendations about what they can do to roll back the early cognitive decline if they are shown to be at risk. 
There are many potential use cases that are very attractive for healthcare providers. It can be used in health screening. Uh, today, if you go for health screening, we check everything from the neck down. We do not check our brains, which is the most important part of the body. This test can also be included in long COVID packages. Many providers in Singapore have already come up with long COVID packages that test the heart, the lung, and the brain. It can also be used for programs for early cognitive decline. Um, brain health is also affected by metabolic syndromes, by, by gastrointestinal conditions. And so, so uh, this is another possible use case for the test to be included in the treatment and monitoring of man metabolic syndromes and gastrointestinal conditions. Um, this test can also be used for post-operative monitoring of stroke and other neurological conditions because we can this is sensitive enough to detect that a person may be improving during stroke rehab. Another case, uh, use case scenario is to be used during cancer therapy because we know that cancer therapy causes brain fog. Right. NeuroWiser comes alongside the healthcare provider to provide physician training. We provi provide also a physician checklist on what questions they can be the physicians could be asking their patients. We also support rollout. We, we support uh, it through uh, ops and also uh, through marketing collateral, and we also uh, co-do co marketing campaigns. Right. NeuroWiser works with a series of high-profile uh, 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 um, uh, healthcare providers here in Singapore. We do research with SGH, the NNI, the National University Hospital, with IMH. Um, this test is already adopted in Singapore. We have uh, healthcare providers such as Farrah Park, Parkway Shenton, Satacom Health, MHC and Meraxis that have already started to roll out these tests and they use this test to in those scenarios that I, I had that that I, I detailed earlier the most popular being health care, uh, health screening programs because this is something that people realize people realize that they want to test their brain we're moving strongly into India where we will be pilot we will be going out soon with AIG and with Apollo hospitals we are currently also moving strongly to Malaysia, and I hope to be able to announce uh, new healthcare providers in the next quarter. We're interested to go to Indonesia, to Thailand, and because the, our test is uh, is highly visual and it's easily translated into many many languages, we're able to very quickly go into different countries as well. So I thank you for your attention. And if you have any questions, do uh, give me your questions and also email me. Or if not, I hope you to, to see you in Thailand. Thank you so much, Zian. So yes, um, NeuroWiser will be in Thailand. They are at Booth H21. So you can also connect with them in person, live at the show. So now we shall hand over to our second speaker today, uh, Ms. Ng Tsai Lin from Haikura. Tsai Lin, over to you. Thank you. Good afternoon, everybody. I'm Tsai Lin, the, the CEO and co-founder of Haikura. So we are a Singapore-based medtech startup and we develop AI algorithms for ultrasound-guided medical procedures. Really, our mission is to empower medical professionals to make better decisions by integrating AI into image-guided procedures. And the first area that we're looking in, into is with spinals and epidurals. So you may be surprised to know that 6 in 10 women in labour require multiple punctures for their epidural myself included. So I had a traumatic and um, I was under a lot of distress when I'm going through epidural for the birth of my second child. Um, but not just women in labor, seven in 10 seniors also require multiple punctures for their spinal anesthesia. And these procedures are very, very common for hip or knee replacement surgeries. And even for children or adults who have a suspected meningitis or unexplained fever, three in 10 have their treatment delayed because of a failed lumbar puncture. Now, this is what we call a spinal injection. It involves an injection into the lumbar area of your spine. And there are about 76.5 million of these procedures performed annually. So this is a very common procedure in the hospitals. But they are very challenging. It requires a lot of precision as the pathway for the needle insertion is very narrow. Uh, and there are two problems here. The first one is with the level. So the correct uh, optimal level to put the needle in is between the L3 and L4 interspinal space. Uh, if you put the needle up too high, 
uh, it may hit the spinal cord, which typically ends around the L1 or L2. But if you try to be more conservative and put the needle in a little bit lower, then the nerves at the intended area may not be blocked, leading to very ineffective anesthesia. The second problem is with the angular the angle of the needle insertion. If you imagine that the needle is inserted in this manner, it will hit the bony structure and not be able to proceed. The doctors would then have to reinsert the needle uh, and then do several try and error to get the needle to the correct angle to reach into the deeper parts of the spine. So if you see a, a, a image here, this is that very small area where the needle can pass through and be able to reach the epidural space. So what the doctors are doing now is that they're using their fingers uh, and to use a technique that we call a landmark and palpation-based technique where they use the fingers to feel for the bones. And so this uh, relies very heavily on the interpretation by the doctors. So as you can imagine, the junior doctors may not do very well. Uh, it's blind to target. And if you have a patient that comes in with a high BMI, then you will not be able to feel anything. And so the, the needle really goes in blindly. And so from literature research, we found that 43% uh, requires... Um, a, have a first attempt success rate, which means that 60 over percent requires multiple punctures. Now, medical boards, and there are a lot of clinical evidence, have shown that with ultrasound as an assistive tool, uh, the first attempt success rate increases drastically. However, we see that the adoption of ultrasound uh, by the clinicians to do a spinal injection is only 10%. And when we questioned the clinicians why, uh, two things came up. The first thing is about the training. So you do require specialized training to identify the structures, to be able to identify where is the correct position and angle to put the needle. And the second thing is it gets more and more difficult with obese patients just because the, the landmarks is a bit deeper. And so the ultrasound technology, the image may appear a little bit blur and fuzzy. So we have come up with our product called U-Signed. It's an automated AI ultrasound guidance software. And I'm going to show you a demo of how it works. So the first thing that you do for doctors is that they put the ultrasound probe on the patient's back. And with that, our software will be able to automatically identify uh, the landmarks. So what the doctor needs to do is to move the probe upwards and to find the L3 and L4. So they will move upwards and our software will tell them where is the L3 for. And so at this point, that's L3 for, the doctors can make the line here to identify that this is L3 for. And then next, they'll turn the probe at the L3-4 line to find the midline. So they will uh, move the probe left and right. And now they will try to find the right angle. So they'll tilt the probe to find the correct angulation. And the right angle is found when we see the epidural space. And again, the software would uh, tell you where the epidural space is and even measure the skin to the epidural space that we, in which case now is about 4.8 centimeters. So the doctors can then mark that the uh, midline spot again, and when they join the two lines, X marks the spot, the doctor will then put the needle in at this point here and at the angle that the epidural space is found. So you sign the software is uh, installed on the tablet, which is connected to the hospital's own ultrasound machine. So we do not require the hospital to purchase an expensive ultrasound machine to use our software. We are compatible with major ultrasound brands. Um, it runs on off-the-shelf laptop or software. So if the doctor has their own uh, uh, laptop, they can just install our software. It is currently HSA approved as a Class B medical device. We have performed three clinical studies on over 200 patients, and we have shown very high first attempt success rate. On the normal weight patients, 92%. But the real problem is with the obese patient, where you get uh, more than half of them has multiple punctures. We're able to increase this to 82%, which is a, a great benefit for patients. Um, this technology has already been adopted in Singapore and we are starting a clinical trial in Australia. And we are interested to expand the use of USINE to help more patients uh, worldwide, starting from the regional area like Thailand, um, Indonesia, Philippines, etc. Now, USINE can also be used as the educational and training tool for the hospital uh, to train the junior doctors or the residents to use ultrasound for to perform epidural or spinal anesthesia. Now, 
The other problem that I talked about is with the obese patient. So typically for ultrasound, let me show you what's the problem. With a very uh, normal weight patient, you can see the structures actually um, appearing very nice and bright. But with the obese patient, the structures appear fuzzy and cannot be seen clearly. Now with our AI algorithm, we are able to identify this in spite of the difficulties in imaging, that this is the L5, L4 and L3. So this gives the doctor a lot of confidence to see to identify some of these structures uh, and to use U sign for the more difficult patients. So just to summarize, we can reduce the cost for hospital by treating, reduce the, the complication and the training, improving the training for the doctors. We reduce the procedural time because it takes less attempts to put in the needle. It leads to better clinical outcomes. And of course, most importantly, it will improve the patient satisfaction. So these are here are some of the testimonial of you signed. Um, with is implemented in Singapore Hospital, and we've heard very good things about you signed. For example, it um reduces complications, useful for educational purpose. It takes away the guesswork and useful to identify the landmarks. So um, this is the competitive landscape. I think ultrasound adoption has been increasing in uh, hospitals and we have seen a lot of startups that's doing diagnostic on ultrasound. But what is really important for, some, for these doctors is really to have that ultrasound uh, AI uh, decision at, at the point when they're putting in the needle. So we are doing real-time needle guidance on, on uh, and as well as being equipment agnostic. So this would encourage uh, the hospital to pick up our solution without having to purchase a, a different ultrasound machine. You can use back their own ultrasound machine. So some of the highlights, we were named as one of the top five research breakthrough by Sync Health. We were featured in Forbes Asia 100 to watch and our clinical trials is all published on um, uh, peer-reviewed uh, publications. So um, our purpose uh, here is really to look for a partnership with distributors uh, who can give us the connection uh, to sell our software in hospitals and also to look for clinicians who is interested in our AI technology, uh, uh, possibly extending the use of AI ultrasound to other parts of the body. And of course, another one is the Ultrasound Training Institute because USINE is very effective for educational and training purpose. So that's um, all um, that I have to, for today. I hope you can come to our booth in the Medical Fair Thailand, and then we can show you a demo of how USINE can work. Thank you. Thank you, Thailand. Yes, yeah, so you'll be able to see the product um, at Medical Fair Thailand at booth D09, and that's where Haikura is. Thank you. And now we'll hand over to our next speaker, Danny from the BioLabs. Danny, over to you, please. Hi. Hi, uh, hi everybody. I'm Danny Teo. I'm the CEO and founder of the BioLabs. Uh, okay, uh, I, I like what uh, Chuyin has uh, presented just now because uh, that's exactly what we are looking for, a partner who can actually work with us on neurological diseases. So today I'm going to share about neuro problem, neuro, uh, uh, neurological diseases, and uh, I'm going to share my slide. Uh, let's see how... Okay... Uh... All right. Um, oh, sorry. Okay, this is our first slide. Uh, okay, basically, uh, you know, uh, we have been talking about neurological diseases and all this, and um, uh, our research is from NTU, Nanyang Technological University. But uh, before that, I would like to uh, emphasize a little bit on neurological diseases currently in the world. You, you see, the problem now is there are more than 1 billion people worldwide with neurological diseases. And every 65 seconds, one person is diagnosed with a neurological disease. And according to WHO, World Health Organization, neurological diseases will surpass cancer by the year 2040. And uh, the economic, economic burden of neurological health care is not only the patient, but also the caregiver and the society, because this person will not be able to work. Somebody has to look after them. So uh, the social impact on the society is very high. And um, our recent encounter, we realized that also the, the problem is actually getting younger and younger. We have patients who are actually uh, 28 years old getting Parkinson, dementia, that kind of thing. And uh, as you know, Parkinson and dementia, which are the two main neurological diseases that we are focusing on now, 
there's no cure for these two diseases now in the market. You know, our, our Minister of Health have been talking about, you know, SG healthy, uh, SG health, and then we are try we try to age healthily. But how can you age healthily if your brain is malfunctioning? And that's one uh, of the main problems that we are facing now uh, in Singapore and also around the world. So uh, <clears throat> the pilot is actually a research initiative from NTU, uh, Nanyang Technological University. I myself, I have been in university for 13 years and uh, I worked uh, from the advancement office, I actually work with the College of Science at NTU. So uh, what we what we discovered in NTU is that uh, my job is actually to uh, bring whatever discovery and invention from the College of Science to the world and try to commercialize it. And vice versa, if there's any commercial entity who wants to do research, we I also bring them to NTU and we do, do the research together. So uh, this is basically my job. And um, over the years, we realized and we found, discovered that there are some rare tropical herbs that has not been used by any medical institution in the world. And, uh, and they, it contains certain property which can actually help to reverse certain, certain neurological diseases. And uh, these are tropical herbs, it's not Chinese herbs. So um, these herbs are not found in China. It's actually found in places like Amazon, Africa and all this. So uh, uh, basically, we realized that uh, we can actually use this herb to do some kind of uh, scientific reversal of uh, neurological uh, diseases. So what we did is actually in NTU, uh, we, we actually uh, has done research uh, collaboration at NTU, and uh, we have, uh, later on I'll show you the scientific research that we have done to prove that uh, we can actually help to improve the quality of life of some uh, Parkinson's uh, patient and dementia patient. And um, we, uh, we set our own plantation in uh, Malaysia, which is deep in the forest. And uh, we, uh, water, uh, we water our plants with uh, natural spring water from the mountain. So there's no tap water involved. Everything is natural. And uh, because it's natural, 100% natural, there's almost minimum side effect uh, in this product. So the next one I'm going to show you is how we did the research uh, in NTU. Okay, um, what you see here is two test tubes, two test tube, but it's the same fly. The first test tube on the left, uh, is a, they are actually uh, fruit fries inside. Uh, for Parkinson research, we actually use fruit fry, transgenic fruit fry, which actually represents the human brain, about 80%, 81% of human brain. So uh, this fruit fry has actually been uh, 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 maybe to actually uh, feature Parkinson disease. So when a, for a normal fly, when you put it into a test tube and you shake the test tube, the fly will try to escape very quickly out of the test tube. But if a fly has Parkinson, the, the, the limbs and the, the legs and all this are not moving well, so they are not able to actually climb up the test tube. So the first video I'm going to show you on the left, you can see from here, 60% of the fly has problem even moving out of the test tube. With a certain percentage, you can strong enough to move out. So this is what happened when the person has Parkinson uh, disease. So uh, the same group of flies, we fed them with Ubrain 100, which is our first product, and uh, uh, for about 30 days. And after 30 days, on the right, you can see the same group of flies has actually became normal. You see, all of them are actually running out of the, the test tube very quickly. And uh, you can see here, uh, there's still one weak one at the bottom here, which is still not able to go out. But uh, another one come down and then encourage it to move for Chia Yu, Chia Yu, and then it went up together. So it not only heal the Parkinson's disease, they are able to help others also. So this is a very encouraging sign. And we have uh, tested on 500 over fruit fry with almost 98% success rate. So basically, uh, uh, through this experiment, we were quite confident that uh, what we have in hand is able to help to, uh, to reverse uh, Parkinson, uh, Parkinson's disease. At the moment, uh, during that time, two years, two three years ago, we were only testing on flies. But uh, <clears throat> uh, we have launched a product in July 2021. And since 2021, we have actually uh, introduced this product to more than 1,000 over uh, patients of, uh, all over the world. Uh, Singapore, Malaysia, Thailand, regional China, uh, Macau, Hong Kong, USA, even to Europe. So... Um, so far, we've tested this product on the Russian. Uh, we've tested on Americans. We've tested on Thai, Indonesian, Australian, New Zealand, 
Italian, uh, uh, people from Iran, English, and uh, and also people from Canada. And um, the, the, the result of improving the lifestyle has been quite promising. So uh, what I'm going to show you next is actually, uh, this is our first product, uh, Ubrain 100. Uh, Ubrain is not sold in Guardian or Watson. It's only sold in the hospital and polyclinic. So uh, that's the only place that we are selling because uh, it's, it's not just a vitamin ABC. It's actually also uh, something that we can use to improve the quality of, uh, of a neurological disease patient. So, so uh, this was the first product that was launched. And uh, this product has been actually helping a lot of uh, Parkinson patients to actually improve the quality of life. And uh, um, following that, we actually came up with the next product, which is Ubrain 50. This one is a smaller version of Ubrain 100, which is uh, targeted towards uh, younger generation who wants to prevent themselves from getting neurological diseases. So, um, but it also helps to actually improve your mental clarity. So it boosts your, your, your mental clarity so you're able to actually uh, do your work better, do your task better. And uh, recently, we just launched this uh, uh, range called View Brain Focus and Memory. Okay. Since the beginning of the year, we have actually tested uh, U-Brain uh, Focus and Memory on students who are actually uh, from the tuition center and the brain enrichment center. And we realized that actually this product is able to help the student to focus and memorize what they, they study, especially for ADHD student. Uh, student who has ADHD problem, they couldn't sit still. But after taking this product for a while, they are able to sit down and do their homework, homework and also listen to the teacher. So it helps students who are actually uh, from, from five years old onward, uh, they are able to help them to focus and memorize what they have studied. So this is a product. And uh, I mean, just an early uh, announcement. This product will be featured in the next uh, movie, uh, I Am Not Stupid 3. Uh, so so uh, this is a Jack Neal movie and uh, it will be featured in this movie. So uh, uh, to actually to let uh, the public know that there's something that can, change, that can actually help the child to focus and um, memorize their work. So um, next product we have a nice migraine. Uh, Ubrain migraine has been tested actually uh, anecdotally and it has been uh, tested over the one year to actually help to reduce uh, migraine attack. And uh, we have uh, quite a number of success uh, cases from this. And um, even those with 40 over years of migraine, they actually uh, realize that the migraine actually, the attack reduces you know, from two, three times a week to probably once a month or even no, nothing in a month. So this is uh, already on the market. And uh, <clears throat> the next one is the U-Brain T. Okay, this one is actually a booster to replace coffee without, uh, coffee without the caffeine. So uh, because it's, it doesn't con contain any caffeine preservative or artificial coloring, and uh, it's meant to actually boost you the whole day. So uh, one packet of uh, U-Brain T can boost you the whole day in your work, help you to concentrate uh, and, and focus on your task or so. And uh, okay, um, uh, I'm going to show you something. Uh, this is actually our official video, but uh, this particular Parkinson patient, he's a 13 years Parkinson patient. Uh, he's suffering, he was suffering from idiotic Parkinson and uh, he couldn't talk for 13 years. Meaning to say he has not spoken to his wife or his son for 13 years. His son actually grew up without talking to the father. And secondly, he couldn't walk, uh, not because his leg is uh, injured or what, but because the brain actually told the leg that he cannot walk. And he was always on wheelchair. So what happened is last year, June the 1st, he started taking our Ubrain 100. And on June the 10th, just 10 days after, he started to stand up and walk around the house. And uh, three days later, he was playing card game with the family. And one week later, when, we, when they went for, when the wife brought him for medical checkup, he was already, already walking first time in 13 years. So I would like to show you this video. He's now our official video man. And uh, he's, he would like to use this video to also encourage more people to, to, uh, uh, to, to know that there's, there's still hope for them. Don't give up. Uh, we have something that can improve your quality of life. So this video is, uh, I'll play this video for you. Take a look.
Okay, that's uh, all I have to share. Uh, if you have any question, we can answer question later. Okay, thank you. Thank you. Thank, thank you, you so much, Danny. So much, Danny. Yeah, I need to stop this. Uh. Oh, sorry. Uh. How do I stop this? Uh, yeah, you just stop sharing at the top. Okay. Yeah. Oh, okay. Okay, thank okay, you. Okay, thank you. Yeah. So yes, yeah, so um, Biolabs will be at the show as well. You can see them at H23. So now let us hand over to Thomas Beaumont from RTKS. Thomas, over to you, please. Thank you. Um, so you should be able to see my screen now. Yes. Okay, so um, I'm Thomas from RTKS. Uh, I'm the head of sales uh, in RTKS. Just quickly, uh, I'm going to explain uh, the company name. So RT comes from the Latin word uh, limbs and care stands for caring. So RT care stands for caring for limbs. So we are a um, company that develops uh, rehabilitation uh, solutions and uh, intelligence rehabilitation solutions. And uh, our main focus is how we can bring rehabilitation closer to people. Uh, meaning closer to people, uh, I will give an example, is um, we can have a lot of uh, different technologies in, in hospitals, uh, but if those technologies required a lot of supervision, then it's difficult to access them. So uh, it's bringing closer to people in hospitals, but also in community as well as uh, at home. Um, so just to explain a little bit our solution, the visible part is of course the, the hardware, the robot, uh, but um, the when we develop, when we design the robot, uh, we design them based on how human and technology should interact together. And this is called human-robot interaction. Uh, the other parts that you can see on top of the uh, of the infographic is the serious games. So it's a very big concept in the field of research. And the main principle of those serious games is each game serves a purpose. So in the front end, it's a game itself. So it's motivating, engaging. But in the back end, because it's a serious game, the game is constantly thinking about how to help the patient. Then the third part that we develop in our solution is the intellig artificial intelligence. Uh, we focus completely on how to take a decision like a therapist. So that is the main goal of our AI. We don't have an AI that can do everything. Our uh, focus is how the robot can take decision like a therapist while the patient is doing the task with the robot. And lastly, we build a care platform. Uh, it includes patient's profile, training planner, different games. Uh, and our cloud platform is a secure platform that allows information to come to the therapist. So therapists can have access to our platform remotely. So it makes the planning process easier for them. So the reason of bringing all those activities in one company, it's to go back to the vision. We are a company that is building solutions so that patients and therapists can have an easy access to the technology without having to worry about, is it gonna be super complex? Am I gonna be able to, to manage it myself? So we are building solutions to bring quality rehabilitation within everyone's reach. So we are uh, actually at the moment deployed in hospitals, uh, in community center, as well as in home. So in hospitals, uh, we can have therapists supervising uh, couples of patients. In community, people can come and uh, do their rehabilitation on their own. And at home, people are doing their rehabilitation on their own and the therapist can uh, access the reports and uh, adapt the therapy remotely from uh, their clinic or through their computer or their iPad. Uh, we have lots of collaboration, ETH Zurich, Lanyon Technological University, Penton Sec, Imperial College of London. Um, so just what's something important is when we 
have developed and created their solutions, we started from the, con the conventional therapy point of view. So what's really important uh, in conventional therapy is that uh, physicians are really good at interacting with the patients to understand um, the patients. And that's something that technology miss uh, nowadays. And so we are not trying to replace, replace them. We are trying to support them. And thanks to our AI, uh, our solutions are able to adapt to the patients like a therapist would adapt. So that's something really important. The other thing is uh, therapists will also um, adapt their forces during the therapy. So same, we have different forces in our solutions. Uh, like this, uh, uh, our robots are able to adapt uh, like a therapist would do during a therapy session. And uh, lastly, it's the therapy intensity. So of course, numbers of, of repetitions are important in during the therapy sessions, but quality repetitions are the most important. So quality, uh, quality of, of this intensive therapy is very useful. And for us, this is the key, the key thing uh, we want to build in our solutions around and build our AI around it. So we have numerous publications and studies in different international journals. Um, so let's go to our solution. So our first uh, uh, intelligent robot is the H-Man. It's a robot for upper limb rehabilitation. And uh, we are uh, the only solution which is able to offer an independent therapy in different environments. We are medically certified for used uh, for independent use as well as uh, as home, we are deployed uh, in Singapore in in patients' home, and patients are using it independently. So here you can see um, uh, a patient playing on the H man. Oh, sorry, the robot is not focused on the game part. The H man is really looking at the coordination uh, between the shoulder and the elbow joints. So we spend a lot of research to understand how we can assess it reliably uh, just by looking how the handle movement, uh, how the, the handle is moving. And we have a lot of publication to explain how we have done those results. Um, now we are launching a, a new robot, the Randy bot. Uh, so why the HMN focuses on the proximal Component Randy Bot's focus is rehabilitation of the distal component, which nat naturally looks like activities of daily living, combining hand and wrist training. It is design it, it's designed on a form factor that can be deployed even in minimal supervised and in smaller settings. Both our solutions are portable solutions. Uh, they are the most portable solutions on the market right now. So uh, just a quick video to show you how it works. So right now it is uh, only launch in Singapore, but we are uh, launching it in, in other countries in Europe as well as in, in Asia. Um, like I mentioned, we also have developed a platform uh, that helps therapists to access uh, every device remotely. Uh, they can have access uh, reports of the patients and they can adapt uh, training plans uh, of each patient to have to in order for patients to have a personalized training. Um, we also have other accessories uh, that we can adapt. So by removing the, the standard uh, handle, we can add uh, a smart grip to work on the on the grip strength. Um, we also have an arm support for more uh, for heavily impaired patients in order or for patients to be able to have longer therapy sessions on our HPN. And that's all. Uh, so uh, looking forward to see you in, in Thailand uh, uh, in our bow, in, in our booth, and we'll be happy to, to do a demonstration of, of both our solutions. Thank you. Thank you, Thomas. So yes, Articast will also be at the show at both DO7, so you can see them there. 
And last but not least, let us now hand over to our last speaker, May and Julie from Archon. Ladies, over to you. Thanks, Stephanie. Right. Uh, let me show my screen first. Share. Share. Yeah. Anybody see my screen? Yes, perfect. Right. Um, by the way, I'm May. I'm a group CEO for Acon Group. Um, so I wanted to share that uh our group uh, consists of four portfolio of business. Uh, so you see, uh, we have Archon. Uh, what we do is uh, we help company get medical device and drug registration approval. Uh, and we have expanded to provide a B2B international medical platform uh, ecosystem to uh, put all the manufacturers, distributor, uh, and also service provider into this so that um, easy for uh, each of us to connect. Um, and then we have also uh, MedTech Boss, a business one-stop service that we provide a distributor search and also a business matching. Um, we also help uh, startups uh, on the technical file and uh, doing their first uh, country approval, whether CE or the US or sometimes the local country. Um, the last one actually is the International Medical Device School. Uh, because of our knowledge um, and also our network, uh, so we have different industry expertise uh, and also the educator that able to uh, share from product development to the commercialization uh, skills. Um, so our, our team uh, consists of the ex-regulators uh, from different countries, myself from the Singapore HSA, uh, where I draft the law for Singapore for uh, uh, 10 years, uh, where I'm the first batch uh, and went into the industry. So that's why uh, with the industry experience, we can understand and help company to strategize for the market access globally. So uh, why choose our cons? Um, in terms of registration, we cover uh, different medical device, IVD, and also we help on the drug therapeutics, uh, health supplement and cosmetic, um, so that uh, some of the uh, cosmetic health do not overclaim uh, those medical, otherwise it will be controlled um, uh, with the uh, approval required. Uh, we also have... Uh, different uh, present into different countries. So we able to provide market access and advise which country to go first. Um, and also the uh, uh, approval, uh, we have a strategy, uh, understand the company needs and see how to uh, uh, submit uh, relevant information, not too much, not too little uh, to get the approval faster. So, so that the company can concentrate on the business while we make sure that it's compliance. Um, and also we have registry updates. We have our own journalists to write the, the registry news globally. Our presence, um, sorry, our presence uh, in um, nine countries, uh, Akon Group uh, on the left, as you see here, uh, mostly Asia uh, and also the Switzerland side. Uh, we work with global partners for the uh, global registration uh, because we help our partners and help Partners also help us. So uh, uh, working with partners uh, uh, to make sure that they deliver uh, with proper communications to our clients. So uh, MDS, we also have expanded to five countries. Yeah. And uh, the MedTech boss um, in Singapore and Atopolis is uh, headquartered in Singapore. So this is my background. Um, uh, I founded a uh, few companies. So now I'm a serial entrepreneur, uh, also advisor for the government. Uh, you can see here and some uh, previous ASEAN um, committee. So I have a, a, a director's level uh, team that look after each of the divisions. Yeah, so you can contact us and the relevant divisions will able to advise you uh, relevant. Yeah. Um, typically for registrations, you have registration, uh, you have the license holding. Yeah, uh, to make sure that, you know, whether... Uh, you want to hold by a third party or by the distributor. Uh, so we'll advise you what is the pro and cons. Uh, we provide also regulatory support. Uh, sometimes people go for maternity or we need to support very quickly. Yeah. Uh, and uh, compliance to others' uh, requirements, uh, sub uh, substance, wireless, uh, uh, hazardous uh, poisons. Yeah. So typically this is a, kind of like a process that we make sure that classification, whether exempted for registration, compiled until submission approval. Um, corporate expansion so we can help company to soft land it into the different countries 
uh, because we have different countries present, so that's why we can help company to to tell you, you know, which uh, state uh, that you should uh, you should uh, open your company and what is the uh, tax relevant to the country uh, and also the market strategy, um, you know, the pricing in that country. <clears throat> Yeah, so this is what you can see that we have run the International Medical Device School uh, in five countries. So in Singapore with Damascus Poly and Korea with, uh, with uh, Korea University Medicine. Uh, Atopolis platform, so roughly this is the one. So it's a free platform for uh, five products and people can also post inside. Yeah, so we have different drive uh, because we are going for the 10 years anniversary. Yeah. Uh, in terms of upcoming, uh, we have some other upcomings uh, like uh, matching that I will show you later on. Yeah. Um, we always present in Medica. Thank you for message, Medica. So uh, we are in Thailand this year and also in Germany. Right. So uh, different clients that we serve in different uh, portfolio. Yeah. Um, so quickly show you uh, just a, a glance of this. Of this uh, Atopolis, uh, it's a global medtech community. You can join us, it is free. Um, so you can uh, have a registry support, contact us, and you can see what is the government funding available. Um, we are building up uh, from Singapore to other countries so that when you go overseas, you know what funding available. Uh, when you want to do trademark, how much you need to do, uh, how much you have to pay for courier. Uh, so this is a free trademark calculator that you can do your budget. Uh, news, so uh, you want to know uh, where you need to go. Uh, so uh, so um, there's different events. So HSA, uh, there is a coming event on the 14th August. Uh, so uh, join us under the MedTech Industry Group um, and also the uh, US talking about um, Philippines and uh, Indonesia that will be speaking this Friday. Yeah. So we have covered 75 countries and already 1,500 users, 800 company into this platform. So people can post, uh, you know, information looking for distributor here, and you can chat with them and the product. Yeah. So uh, matching for a startup, you can uh you know, look for investor. So we will push to our investor panel. So we look we can help to look for investor, to look for clinicians, um, and also the uh, M and A uh, buyers in case you need to sell your company later on. Yeah. Um, business is the one stop solutions that you can uh look for uh partners that you want to do translation for your uh, product uh, and also we have different pavilions that we work with the uh, government that you can see the the products yeah so basically the product here you can see the store and when you click in you can product here yeah so i think that's it for what we want to share i think yeah so uh see you in um uh, Thailand and also in Medica Desidov if you are not in Asia um, and um, join us for the some talks that just now I mentioned um, yeah please join at your police yeah um, anything you can send send to help desk uh, for our contacts thank you thank you May so as May has said um, they are also at the show you can find them at booth C14 so let us take a look at the questions. I think we've got some questions, but they have all been answered already. That's great. So if you have further questions, um, you can also reach out to us via email and we can pass it on and connect you to the speakers. Um, with that, let me share this. So recording of this session will be available in our digital live platform, which will go live the 1st of August. So if you have not registered, please register your visit so you can continue the discussions with our exhibitors via the platform. There will be the ability to chat with them, check out in detail their products, um, and of course, to see them live in person at the show from 13 to 15 of September in Bangkok. We also have more webinars coming up um, with every Wednesday. So the next one will be next Wednesday, 12th of July. The speaker lineup and uh, topics are available on our website as well. With that, uh, a big thank you to all our speakers and all of you for joining us today. We'll see you soon. Thank you and goodbye.